Hey, good evening, everyone. Thanks for watching. Tune is at 10 tonight. A uh, stunning story, bizarre story. A couple who underwent artificial insemination at a Utah clinic finding out the husband's sperm had been switched with somebody else's. After a very difficult search, the couple discovered who their daughter's biological father was, and that part of the story, well, it's even more jaw-dropping. Chris Jones is on this exclusive story for us tonight. And Chris, the University of Utah has been investigating this case since April, correct? Yeah, they've been looking at this for about nine months about this family, a family who we'll call Paula, Jeff, and Ashley. They thought it would be fun to do some DNA testing, but when Paula got the results, she was literally floored. I told my husband, and he said, you know, that sounds really interesting. For Paula, Jeff, and their daughter, Ashley, it seemed like so much fun. For $99 and a cheek swab, the website 23andMe.com could trace your lineage back 10,000 years. I was looking forward to getting the results back. When Paula eagerly looked at those results, Jeff and Ashley, she found... I felt my stomach just drop. We're not related. When I brought that up and brought um, my daughter's and my husband's DNA um, up next to one another, that's when it said that there was, they didn't share any DNA at all. And I said, you're not going to believe this, but it, it's showing that you are not related, that you share no DNA. I said, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And he says, of course. What they were thinking is about how Ashley was conceived. In the early 90s, Jeff and Paula had trouble getting pregnant, so they received artificial insemination and reproductive medical technologies, a clinic associated with the University of Utah. And in 1992, Ashley was born. But now, the question, who is her father? They thought, is it possible that someone at the clinic made a mistake with their sample? I had to come to that realization at that moment that what I was looking at was true and that the unthinkable and the unbelievable was true. Paula, using the genealogy, tracked down a cousin of Ashley's biological father who told her that this man, Thomas R. Lippert, had worked at the very clinic where Paula had been inseminated. I remember that he was at the front desk a lot of the time. Lippert also worked in the lab and kept a collection of baby pictures behind his desk. He was very proud of all those pictures. You know, he's it almost seemed like a brag board up there. Lippert's mother agreed to a DNA swab, and the result confirms that Lippert is indeed Ashley's father. But how? Paula thinks Lippert switched his samples with Jeff's. All those photos of the babies that he was so proud of, I said, oh my God, how many of those are his biological children? But this story only gets more stunning. Finding out who Tom Lippert was is... You know, it was an absolute shock. Tom Lippert, before working at RMT from 1988 to 1994, was a college professor who served two years in prison for a high-profile kidnapping case that made national headlines. In 1975, he snatched up a college co-ed and kept her for three weeks, allegedly conducting, quote, love experiments by keeping her in a black box and using electroshock therapy on her to make her fall in love with him. Famed attorney F. Lee Bailey represented him. Tonight, Paula and Jeff are speaking out. They think it's possible other couples may have been victims of Lippert's possible switches as well. But when it comes to their daughter, Ashley, Paula says she wouldn't change a thing. You know, I keep telling myself we wouldn't have our daughter if it wasn't what happened to us. So I just balance out everything with that because nothing is better than our daughter. Now, finding answers is going to be difficult. Lippert has since died. The fertility clinic no longer exists. And a University of Utah healthcare spokesperson says uh, the university did contract with that clin clinic, but they didn't own or operate it. Now, they also told us in a statement that, quote, there are no remaining records from RMTI to prove the claims that the man in question uh, has been deceased since 1999. Consequently, it is unknown how this incident might have happened in addition, there is no evidence to indicate this situation extends beyond the case in question. But if you're concerned that it did, if you use the clinic, uh, the university will provide genetic testing to anyone who was treated at the clinic between 88 and 94. And we've placed a contact number for you to the universe, university's lab on our website, KUTV.com. Uh, quickly, is there a chance we'll never know all the answers in this case? It's a very good chance. Uh, there's not much of a trail. The clinic is closed down. Lippard took whatever he knows to his grave. Right. Shocking yeah. story. Bizarre. Chris, thanks.